Another morning up here in Scotland. Pretty good, pretty good day. It's uh, already 19 degrees. Doesn't look like any rain today. Well, morning everybody. It's been a few weeks since I put out a video. Um, in this video, I'll assemble it. I'll finish assembling it tonight and doing the editing and tomorrow I expect to upload it. Uh, but in this video, we'll cover only a few of the work streams that are going on. Uh, one of the work streams is corrosion repair. Uh, a lot of chipping and painting topside. That's really occupied a lot of my time lately. I'm trying to get the masts and the booms ready to put back up. There's another one. And I think we'll we'll touch into a little bit of diesel work, you know, because uh, that's uh, some of the the most critical things we have. So I look forward to your comments and uh, enjoy the video. Thanks. Today it's not raining at the moment. Probably going to rain again later. And I've got my my cool new electric needle gun. And I'm going to go topside and grind off some spots and see how that works. You know, I've done needle gunning in the Navy, of course. We'll see how this goes. I've heard these guns work great, but after a while they have reliability issues. I don't know. But they do cost more. But either way, I've got topside corrosion and it's not raining and we got to go do some work. I'm going as fast as I can because I've been in Scotland long enough to know that the rain is always coming. I've just never seen such a place with this kind of rain. I'm not worried. I'm not here trying to do the entire teak deck today. I just want to protect that first couple centimeters in. <laughs> Okay, so I'm on break now, just having a quick little sip. And it actually went pretty well. It's only been two full hours, you know, since I first walked out the door to do the outside work. Lots of inspections on the boat, and one thing I found was that a previous owner had clearly spilled some kind of adhesive in one of the paint lockers or the cockpit lockers on top which drains underneath to the hull down below in the cockpit locker and I'll show you some pictures of that here and the adhesive had drained down and the guy had just left it or he didn't discover it until you know it had already dried and it was very difficult to get off and access was very very difficult at that time for him I can imagine but either way, right or wrong, good or bad, what happened is what happened. It's my responsibility now. And as I was chipping away, I found that it was thin metal, you know, thin. And I'm not going to make any comment about the surveyor's quality, you know. Yeah. You pay people to do freaking ultrasound inspections, and this is what you get. Okay, for reference purposes, I'm going to go back to the pilot house. Going down the hatch, the big orange thing is a fuel tank, a backup fuel tank, or I should call it a bay tank. Alright, so, <clears throat> the issue is, way up under here, I want you to look at these little trails of stuff. And you can see, something spilled some time ago. And it ran down 
the inside of the hole and it pulled up right here okay and you see those little points of light those are through holes rust through <clears throat> so even though I paid a surveyor to do the ultrasound and even though he said it was good five or four millimeters thick everywhere I got a hole here and a hole here and if I hadn't noticed that <clears throat> excuse me and then we put the boat in the water then of course we have a hole in the boat so I've got a needle gun today everything inside the magic marker area to get back to bright metal and see just how much steel we have to replace Okay, so this is what it looks like when you grind back all the pits. Okay, so I wanted to coat the outside of the boat with uh, the paint that is anti-fouling. They make copper-based paint and many other high-end paints that will prevent marine growth from growing on the boat. And that, of course, is really where we're trying to get to, is coat the boat so that it doesn't get covered up with marine growth. That's the goal. My boat at that area has got some five millimeter plate welded like this, okay? And that goes on down to the keel. And that's a big, heavy, robust weld there. This is a weld, that's a weld. And in the video you saw that there had been this adhesive that had kind of flowed like a lava and pooled up right here, okay? And some of it went along the side, but most of the, the adhesive stopped right here. And you think, well, that should protect the metal very, very well, but that's not what happens. Steel is just fine in the water as long as you have drainage. But water gets under there somehow. Water does, and it did, and water got here, and this is where the pitting took place. So this is where the holes in the hull are. I've got two holes right about in that location, upstream of the weld. I have additional pitting here. There's another pit that has gone into this space and I actually got water out. Believe it or not, water came out of there. So this area in between was full of water. That's kind of weird. And I'll show you a video of that now. Now look what I did. I was needle gunning this area and I've got water coming out. Okay, so you can see there's water in there, but that's not the biggest worry. So, because we have grinders, right? And so if you have grinding, cutting tools, you can do all kinds of stuff like you can cut, cut, erase all this, and weld a new plate. And I told the guy, we're just going to weld in a friggin' band-aid over top. We're not going to worry too much about pretty you know we're not worried about making a flush so there's a lot of ways you can do weld repairs the boat is ballasted so it's got little lead balls in the keel okay a lot of them so the, the keel is full of lead shot in some parts of my boat i have lead inside the keel and then there's a welded plate and then there's more lead balls on top okay so so i'm going to keep on drawing the lead balls Okay, because what happened is in the forward part of the boat, somebody decided they wanted to trim the bow down. So they added more, more lead and it was heaping out. And then they got really clever and they decided that because they had lead spilling all over the place and it's just little balls that roll around, they ought to cover that with an epoxy. So they put an epoxy coating over the top of this. And that sounds brilliant because you think now water will just pool up and it'll float to the bilge pump and that'll be that. But just like in the after part of the boat where I found the pitting, we have the similar issue, okay? We have, there are areas where water does get under this, okay? And we have some pitting in this area too. 
nothing is through hole that I could find. I needle gun till the cows came home and I didn't find any holes, but I did find some thin spots. So that's again an area of concern with this boat. Okay, we're shooting this part with a voiceover because I was using my iPhone and the volume control is not as good and I can't use a mic and it was so damn cold I could barely speak. So look, boats can move one of three ways. They can use, move by gravity and they can just sink. Okay, that'll do it. Another way is sail power and that's of course one of the ways this boat moves. This is a motor sailor. It's designed to operate primarily on the engine but I want to be able to sail it. Now the masts are down. This boat has two masts and the initial condition when I bought the boat was a mast looked like that. Okay, So did the booms and the gas. And you can see the before and after pretty plainly here. Another thing, on uh, it's not just a matter of scraping the wood down and putting in varnish. I have to do some electrical work on the mast as well. There's no antennas right now. There were antennas but they weren't connected. So the one of the jobs that I still have to do is run antenna cable up the mast on each mast so that I can have VHF antenna for my VHF radio and I can have a transmission antenna for my AIS. Now the antenna cables pass up holes like that in the bottom of the mast. Yeah, now this is the cable entry point. It's the same way on the other mast too. The red line is just a piece of fishing line and I call that a tug line. When I removed the old antenna cable, I tied a piece of this red fishing line to it so that when I pulled the old antenna cable out, it would be very easy to pull the next cable back in. I just have to attach the cable to the tug line and go to the top of the mast and pull the tug line, and there we go. That's just a deck light. Okay, that's a DC powered LED light that aims down once the mast is up to provide lighting on the deck for the crew. That's going to be pretty handy, and they're very, very low power. That is a forward-facing white light, for like we call it masthead light. Okay. Pay no attention to the rigging or the roller furler. On the right is a stainless steel bracket for the antenna. On the very top of the mast is the red and green tricolor light that also has a stern light on it, and there's an all-around white light for anchoring. Okay. And that's where the antenna physically mounts. Okay. And if you look, you'll see <clears throat> another red string coming out the top of the mast, and that's the tug line. The mizzen mast. All right, so this is the bottom of the mizzen mast. We're not going to get into definitions of yawls and catches and things like that. This is a catch, catch rig boat. Okay, that's the pivot point, the big uh, steel nut for the mast, and that's the entry point for the cables. The first one there is for my auto helm. The black one is for the auto helm. And that heavy black one is actually for the deck light. It's just a two conductor DC electric cable. All right, so this boat has an auto helm. That's one of the sensors for the auto helm, and that's another sensor for the auto helm. Frankly, I don't fully understand that yet. That's my deck light. Same as on the main mast, and the red string again is a spare tug cable. That was where the radar was mounted, but this is just a DC wire, a DC LED light, and you can see the spare tug line. That's not going to stay. Uh, nothing special there, that's just uh, the rigging. At the very top of the mast, you can see the hole where the wires come out, okay? and the yellow one is a tug line. That's where I'm going to run the antenna cable for the AIS antenna, or maybe the VHF radio antenna, and that's where it physically mounts. Yeah, it's not often you get to wear no shirt in Scotland. Frankly, this kind of work is more enjoyable than anything else. It's very serene, it's quiet, just alone with my own reflections. It's a good time. And it's nice to take some bad things and make them better, you know. Go from bad to good. And when you have a rainy day, it's an excellent time to do some diesel work. So again, uh, two ways other than sinking to make a boat work. One is the sails and one is this big red thing, the diesel. 
So we have to do some diesel maintenance just to make sure she's reliable for us. Okay, now we're looking at the top of a diesel engine. So the diesel starts and runs. I run it every couple of days. I turn it on and let it run for a few minutes. I idle it to warm it up and then I run it full out for a few minutes. Then I idle it to cool it down and then I shut it down. But it's not really good for diesel to run a lot on low load. So when I say running full out, that's fine, but it's not pushing it against any water, so it's not really working. So it's not really a good practice to run a diesel too much. So, so Robert is here to pop out the injectors, and we'll send them off to the shop for bench test testing. With injectors, you got to make sure they develop the correct amount of pressure. They open fully, and they pop out the, uh, the, the correct amount of, I'll call atomization. The fuel has to atomize fully. And so the question today is, will the injectors actually come out? So we'll take a look. Okay. Yeah, so that flange here, guys, so it, it looks like a packing gland if it was a valve in a power plant. But that's what holds the injector into place, much much like a packing gland holds, you know, a um, you know valve packing in place. So, so we get that out, and then we have to kind of pop out the injector itself. So I'm looking forward to go sailing with it and seeing just how well she sails or how poorly she sails. Yeah. But uh, the whole objective is to get someplace south, you know. Aye. Uh, yeah. gang so this is a picture of a new nozzle it's very difficult to see but if you could look really closely with really good reading glasses you would see teeny little holes at the very tip of that nozzle so if you think of it like a shower head that makes water spray out that's a basic idea but in this case we make it spray out so it's like a fog a fog you can't be any hard droplets of uh, fuel we want a really good burn. So, but these are going to go in today and we'll test run the diesel. Make sure she's still happy and do the routine servicing on it. And then that's a wrap on the diesel itself. And then we'll take a look inside the fuel tank. Yeah, a rare, rare trip out. Yeah. a gorgeous day it was so no so nice I had to take the rest of the day off and um, I really enjoyed my walkabout got to see some lawn bowling which I had never seen before <clears throat> excuse me 
But I don't want to sit here and tell you that every day in Inverness looks like this. Me just wandering the streets looking at architecture and the beautiful sky. You know, the weather, the weather is a problem. It is a problem for me. Raining again. Got rained out early today. I wanted to keep going, but it was just pretty well socked in now. What absolute shitty weather. It's not too cold, I'll grant you that. About 14 degrees C. Today was forecast to be clear all day. And I'm doing my best to use the hood of my raincoat to cover up the camera. Days like this, where it just rains, I mean, steadily now for three hours. If this doesn't motivate me to just get the hell out of here, I don't know what would. I like the people here. It's a very beautiful country, you know, very pleasant folks, and i got no real issue with it. But the weather is just horrible. Yeah, that sound you're hearing is rain. Persistent rain. And it just doesn't stop. Yeah, that sound you hear is storm water rushing in to the sea. I'm standing in a dry storage lot. I'm currently hiding under another boat. Just to get out of the rain. And my only comment is... I just don't know sometimes if I want to continue to deal with this weather. It is just awful. Awful, awful weather. And I think if I had to live here forever, I think I would be an alcoholic or I'd be suicidal. I, I, I haven't seen the sun in days. You can't plan any outdoor work because you never know if it's going to be raining out. And there are days, my friends, I have to admit, when I think I could sell this boat, even if it, if it was for half of what I paid and put into it, and I could move to Florida and find a cheaper boat and, and, and begin again. And I could be pretty quick about it, you know, knowing what I know now and what kind of boat I would get. It would still get me to my eventual destination, which is, I don't know where, but someplace warm. Because what I'm looking at now is the best it's going to get. It's middle of September now. I don't know, September 8 or 9. And I gotta admit that I'm looking now at even if I was successful getting the boat underway in the water in four more weeks, and even if I got underway leaving here four weeks after that, I still have about four or five more months of this kind of shit weather in front of me, no matter which way I go. It's just gonna get nothing but colder. Hey, well, thanks for watching the video, and let's not get hung up on the negative thoughts that go with the shitty weather. I mean, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, it's been raining since I woke up at 5. You know, I can barely see past the big bridge. So, another shitty day, weather-wise, but I do keep a long list of shitty weather jobs, right? <clears throat> and it's the jobs that you can't work when the weather's really cold or nasty. And I've got a long list of them, and I kind of enjoy some of those jobs better. And today I'm going to focus on uh, making the living conditions on board better. And, you know, finishing the gray water system once and for all, doing some interior carpentry, hanging some hooks so I have places to hold lines and things like that. You know, I've got lots of stuff to do, and it's, and it's okay. So I'll put on some music and enjoy my day living on a boat in a marina like I've always wanted to. So... <clears throat> Damn, that's hot. Alright, so, again, thanks for watching the video. I hope uh, you continue to watch. I think this is episode 7 or 8. I'm kind of losing track. We'll crank out another one in about 3 weeks. In 3 weeks, where we should be, is the mass should definitely be raised. 
the boat should be 100% painted and ready to go in the water. That's where we should be. And then I'll do a tour. Uh, some folks have asked for a tour of the boat on the outside, on the inside. So from the boat, a, a mechanical tour, we'll call it, of the boat, where all the pieces and parts are and how it's designed. That's a good tour to have. But also what I'll call the hotel tour, you know, showing how the cabins are laid out, where people sleep, what their bathrooms look like, you know, that kind of stuff. And at the moment, the boat, the inside looks a lot like a workshop, and that's what we're going to fix. And I think in two weeks, we're going to have gone great strides in that department. So in the next video, we'll definitely have the tour, and I hope you keep watching. So thanks again. Take care, everyone. Bye. Cheers.